UFC 283 just recently wrapped up. I'm going to recap the entire card, giving you guys my reaction and breakdown to each of the matchups. Make sure you guys smash that like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. We'll start from the early prelim opener and finish it off with the main event. Let's start. First fight of the night. Daniel Marcos looks like someone to watch at 135 pounds. Put it on Simon Oliveira, beat him up, and then stopped him in the second round. I really like his kickboxing skills, and it's been something that I personally have seen and thought that he would be able to succeed with. The boxing skills are there as well. Put it on a Simon Oliveira, who to me gets a little too wild and is throwing all these damn spinning back fists. I didn't get it. I think that he kind of ran out of options and got desperate shooting for Hail Marys. Marco's the better fighter, defending off grappling attacks, does his thing, gets himself the win. And I feel like he's somebody that I think could be pretty good 29 14 and 0 as a pro I mean the base is set for him to be someone that they maybe build up at 135 pounds it's a stacked weight class and I'm not saying he's going to go undefeated on the way up but I could see him as a ranked guy so I'm very excited for what the future holds for Mr. Daniel Marcos great win next fight of the night Josiana Nunez and Zara Fern I'll tell you this Zara Farron looked a lot better than I anticipated her to. Early on, it looked like she might stop Nunes in the first round. But Nunes gets it done. Wins the decision. That weight class is essentially dead for me. Women's 145 doesn't really exist in the UFC. It's bigger elsewhere. Wasn't minus 500 worthy. Nunes had a hard time closing the gap until later. She did finish strong and get the win. And hit Zara Farron with some good punches. But yeah, I don't think that she'll be challenging Amanda Nunes for that 145-pound crown anytime soon. I don't think she's ready for that level of skill at all. Because Zara Fern was landing a lot of straight shots, and she's not someone with big power. But I'll tell you this, Zara Fern's skills looked a lot better than I anticipated her to show coming into this fight. Congrats for the win for Nunes. But even Fern in loss, I gotta say I respect what I saw from her. Next fight on the card. Nicholas Dalby, Warley Alves, competitive split decision. I do think the right guy won, but I will say Warley Alves landed some hard punches. Dalby and him actually was a lot more competitive late than I expected. You'd think that Warley Alves would be slowing down in the third round, but he was keeping up with Dalby and trying to attack. Ultimately, Dalby finishes with the win. I like what I saw with his combination striking a lot. Warley Alves would land one big shot, whereas Dalby would land multiple. And for the vast majority of the fight, he was the one pressuring Warley Alves. Deserving decision win. Nicholas Dalby gets it done. He's nearly 39 years of age. Back end welterweight guy. Still a good record. Still doing decent in the UFC run. Not a bad fighter. Fun to watch, I'd say. I like Nicholas Dalby. Puts high pressure and pace on his opponents. And he does well. Let's keep running to our next fight. Ismael Bonfim just killed Terrence McKinney. It's over. The Terrence McKinney hype train died at UFC 283. He's knocked out with a flying knee. Now, I will tell you, I think that Bonfim is on the track to be someone in the rankings. 27 and defensively looks as good as he does. Finds shots as good as he does. He fucked Terrence McKinney up bad, though. Flatline, KO, but even standing up striking before then, McKinney looked like he had no business in the striking exchanges with him. He really couldn't land takedowns on Bonefim. Bonefim looked like the stronger guy. I'm telling you, Ismael Bonefim might be on the track to be someone in that top 15, top 10. He's still young, 27, 19 and 3, destroys Terrence McKinney. You put Patty Pimblett across from him right now, he'll knock Patty Pimblett out. I think this dude is on his way up. I like his male bone theme a ton. And he really put it on Terrence McKinney, who gave hell to Drew Dober, who's a top rated guy. Great performance for him. Next fight on the card. Cody Stammen wins a close decision against Luan Lacerda. I wouldn't have cried if they went the other way, but I do think Stammen did enough in the first two. Third round, Luan Lacerda was putting it on him. For a UFC debut, Luan gave a great showing for himself, but Stammen's been around forever now. He's 21-5, and five, really good boxing combos, light on his feet, moves well. Put it on Lacerda in a competitive bout. It was close, but I do think the right man won in Cody Stammen. He was a crazy wide favorite, an unbettable favorite, and the line was wrong because this fight was pretty damn close. It looked more like a pick'em's fight when they were actually throwing down. 
Cody Stammen gets it done moving forward. He's in an interesting spot where I think he'll beat a lot of unranked guys, but I don't see him breaking into the top 15. I think he'll struggle with the guys there. But outside of there, I think he has good fights on the horizon for him, and he's going to make a nice living in the UFC for a few more years. 33, good boxing chops. Pretty fun to watch. I like Cody Stammen's style a lot. Luan Lacero will be around too. He's not getting cut. Definitely not. Jail Tenomeda is the boogeyman. He destroys Shamil Abderrahimov. Ground and pound KO TKO. Didn't even end up submitting him because Shamil's fucking resilient. In the first second of the fight, though, Abderrahimov hit Jail Tenomeda with a really nice straight. So he did get touched a little just early, and then the takedowns were so precise. To take someone from Dagestan and match him up with the Brazilian, and Brazil just manhandling him, that shows how good Jailton Almeida's ground game is. I really feel like moving forward, we need to keep our eye on him. He's bulked up. He's not 216 anymore. He's 232. He's a real heavyweight now. And everyone in that UFC heavyweight top 15 should be watching very closely, and they should be nervous. I think a lot of people are going to dodge him. I'll put him on the Every Fight to Make series tomorrow, and I really feel like Jailton Almeida's name is going to be another ranked guy. Guy. He beat 15. We're going on up from there. And I think he's really a serious problem at heavyweight. His ground skills, reminiscent of like a prime Noguera, but better. He's Brazil's hope for the heavyweight division. They need him. And I think he could potentially be someone that gets to the real top of the weight class. I love what I see from JL10 Almeida. Next fight on the card. Gabriel Bonfim, Munir Lezez. It was 49 seconds. You know, Lezez did okay in the first couple seconds in, and then Bonfim was really letting his hands fly, and then he ends up locking up that fucking guillotine choke and gets the mounted position, and it's over. It was a great performance. The Bonfim brothers are real. 25, this is the younger one. Welterweight's a tricky weight class, but he just beat a guy in Munir Lezez who's a good fighter at 11 and 2. And he did it quick. 49 seconds. The submission skills of Gabriel Bonfim are definitely slick. But he does have some real power, I will say. He was overthrowing a little bit early. Putting real sting into every punch. They were 100% each and every time. Which against better competition could get him in trouble. But at just 25, I'm not too worried. I think he could potentially be a ranked guy too. I don't know if he's as good as his brother, but he's definitely pretty fucking good and put on a great performance against Munir Lezez. I like what I saw from Gabriel Bonfim. Next fight, Thiago Moises. He won by submission against Mazikiel Costa. Listen, Costa gave a good showing on short notice, but Thiago Moises has the game that is going to beat a guy like Mazikiel Costa, who's a good striker, but as the fight wears, the takedowns are there. Thiago Moises chokes him out. It was a good win. Thiago Moises is supposed to fight Garam Kuta Telidze. I think we rebooked that fight probably moving forward. For Costa, welcome to the UFC. You're only 26. You got a lot of time to grow. He's a fun striker to watch. You give him a full camp. I think he'll beat some back-end guys. And you know what? I know Vitaligo is you know, an unfortunate condition he deals with. In my opinion, he makes him maybe more memorable that he has this crazy hair and he does have, you know, a unique skin tone. Scott Jorgensen, that's a face, at least for me, that I'll never forget or at least a frame that you'll never forget. I think Costa's in that similar territory. He's a fun fighter. I like his style. But Thiago Moises just been in with better guys. Gets the win. I mean, come on. He's been in there with Islam Makachev, the best in the world. That does something. That experience is next level. Moises is a grappling wizard, and he was able to sub Mazikio Costa. Good performance for him, man. I like what I saw from Thiago. He looked in good shape, too. The next fight, Bruno Ferreira and Gregory Rodriguez. Listen, Rodriguez looked like he was on his way to a win. Boom! Flatline, KO, straight punch. Bruno Ferreira knocks out Gregory Rodriguez in the first round of a fight that he was losing. Bro, I don't think Bruno Ferreira is necessarily that level, right? I don't think you put him in there with Brad Tavares. I think he'd get beaten up badly. He's not ready for that step. But he knocks out Gregory Rodriguez. It's crazy to me. Gregory takes the hype of Chidi. Now, Gregory's hype is taken by Bruno Ferreira. Very weird spot for Gregory Rodriguez to lose to a guy on short notice like this. And as brutal of a fashion as it was, I mean, Armin Petrosian is an A1-level kickboxer, really high tier. And Gregory Rodriguez had a very close fight with him, losing a competitive decision. 
Bruno Ferreira flatlines him. In a fight that Gregor Rodriguez was winning, he was letting big shots. Yeah, he got touched up a bit. But damn, little man can strike. And he has some power in his hands. Bruno Ferreira, the Hulk, he's a crazy motherfucker. He's real fun to watch. I don't think he's going to have a crazy big matchup next, but we'll see. For Gregory Rodriguez, he's in shitsville now. We got to put him back to the more end of that middleweight division rankings. He'll still beat a lot of guys. He's got mad power, but that chin is there to be hit. It's a big concern. At this point, he's been knocked out twice. He's taken a lot of damage in all his UFC fights, essentially. And Bruno Ferreira... Does him dirty. Flatline knockout. Brutal KO. This one was sad. Mauricio Shogun Hua, his final fight against Ihor Poteria, and then Poteria knocks him out. Like Shogun essentially just fell over at the end. It was done. He looked good in the opening frames, and he actually landed a nice left hook on Poteria, but as the fight went on, Shogun looked like a grandfather. He didn't have it anymore. He looked off balance, and they say as you get older, your balance starts to go. Very evident with Shogun Hua. He's taken a lot of damage throughout his career, retires after the fight. Poteria gets himself a knockout win, and then Kakali kind of like does the F you to Shogun and does a little dance. So after that, I was like, man, I don't really like Poteria at all. He said he's the future of the weight class. I don't think so. I don't see the caliber of a guy that's that top line. I mean, I think Prime Shogun would dust Poteria in one round. This Igor Poteria, young guy, but he's going to get beaten down by some of the savages on the come up. Hey, He's in the UFC, though, and he beat a legend like Shogun, but he beat, the like, the corpse of Shogun. He didn't beat the real Shogun Hua. He beat Mauricio Grandad Hua. He didn't beat Shogun. That's it. That's a career. Shogun, sad to see him go out like that, though. <clears throat> it's just hard to see the legends get fucked up like that. But at the end of the day, every dog has its day, and Shogun Hua is well past them. Congrats to Poteria for the win, and Shogun on a great career. We jump to the main card. If you guys haven't smashed the likes, Johnny Walker, I mean, he quickly stops Paul Craig. Paul Craig ends up catching his leg, and then Johnny Walker lands a mean right hand. Paul Craig falls down, and then just absolute ferocious sledgehammer fist destroy the face of Paul Craig, and he gets stopped on the ground. Styles make fights, and Johnny Walker's chaos was way too much for Paul Craig striking. The size and strength of Johnny Walker, which I thought would be a factor, absolutely were. And he knocks Paul Craig out. And I think the hype is back on Johnny Walker's side. He's looked good since giving up the CBD. He said that's what was throwing him off. He's on a mean two-fight win streak in a legit win against Paul Craig, who's beaten the champion of the world at this point. Johnny Walker's a problem. I'm very excited for the future for him. He's still extremely dangerous. And he's a damn fan favorite, in my opinion. Paul Craig... Send them back, man. It's looking like the Paul Craig that we knew early in his run. Doesn't take shots well. Tumbles over. Only has the grappling. That magical run might be over with. It is over with. Jessica Andrade, Lauren Murphy. Listen, respect to Lauren Murphy, but Jessica Andrade beat the shit out of her for three rounds with superior boxing, mean leg kicks. And Lauren Murphy is an absolute savage female for not going down. She never went down in the whole fight, but she was hit with so many significant strikes. DC is screaming to the ref, stop the fight, stop the fight. I think they gave Lauren Murphy the benefit of the doubt as she deserved. She's a former title challenger. She has a huge chance against Jessica Andrade. You're not going to call that fight. But damn, Jessica Andrade beat her ass and then called for the title shot at 115, which makes a lot of sense. We're not going to do the Shevchenko rematch right now, at least. She called for Wei Li Zhang, and they want to do it in Brazil. They're not going to do it in Brazil. They're probably going to do it in the States. I think her and Wei Li is a great co-main event. It's a rematch. Wei Li quickly stopped her way back, and that's when she lost the belt. At that point, though, right, they're fighting in Shanghai, China. Andrade just won the belt. That's not the established Andrade that we know now who's actually extremely good. So I think the side of Jessica Andrade is a serious, serious problem for Wei Li. That's the fight to make for sure next. I'll give it away right now. For Lauren Murphy... Fun girl to watch fight. Tough as they come. But not going to be breaking into that top tier again. Like, she's been in that top five. There is no more title fights. Lauren Murphy will be in more fun fights. She's nearly 40 as well. She might not be back in the cage until she's 40. Because she took some real damage in this fight against Jessica Andrade. Great win for Andrade. Gilbert Burns, Neil Magny. Listen, Gilbert Burns took him down and strangled him. 
That was it. Arm triangle. Gilbert Burns is a monster when they go to the floor. His chokes are nasty as hell. His grip strength, his pressure, his slickness. Even his stand-up is dangerous as hell. He can throw huge overhands. He's super explosive. But he can definitely double-leg his opponents, take him down, and just manhandle him. That's what he did with Neil Magny. And Gilbert Burns remains in the upper echelon of the weight class. And really big things, I think, are definitely on the horizon for him. As far as the performance, I don't think he could have done much better than that. He was a massive favorite coming in. And he looked like a massive favorite. Manhandling Neil Magny, who is completely outmatched. Neil doesn't have the power on the feet. And didn't have the grappling resistance. And the championship level jiu-jitsu did as it should. It strangles Neil Magny. Gilbert Burns with a massive win. In. The Hamza Shemaya fight was damn close. I think he's still at the top after he calls for Kobe. Maybe that's next. Find out tomorrow with uh, every fight to make. We'll talk about it. Co-main event. Brandon Moreno and Davison Figueredo. Brandon Moreno did it. He shut the eye of Figueredo, which was honestly badass as hell to see how he was able to just crack him with a massive hook. And then it looked like an eye poke, you know, as soon as you saw it, but actually it was just a hand kind of touched the other side of the face. Davison's eyes completely shut. They stop it in the corner. The doctor actually came in and stopped it, which was a good stoppage because he couldn't see a thing. Brandon Moreno was beating his ass too. He looked so good. Davison Figueredo announces, listen, I'm moving up to 135. Good decision, I feel. Brandon Moreno is the champion now. He already got called out by Alexandre Pantoja. That probably is what's next for him. But this performance here is legacy. Brandon Moreno is one of the best Mexican combat sports athletes at this point. You look at what he's done in MMA, the first ever UFC Mexican-born champion. To me, he's going to be in like the Mexican Combat Sports Hall of Fame up there with the likes of a Julio Cesar Chavez or a Canelo Alvarez. He's a great it was excellent to see Moreno do his thing. He's tough as they come. Absolute monster. His wrestling's A1. His stand-up's there. And he has Davison Figueredo's number. Gets the win and just looks to be getting better and better and better each time out. Big things are on the horizon. And he's not even 30 years old. And he's got his strap back. Love what I saw from him. Him and Davis and Figueredo. I don't think the rivalry ever fully ends. But I doubt we see them face off in the cage again. It was a clean win for Brandon Moreno. He closed the book. He's got two finishes. Davison only has that one close decision win. And then their first fight was a draw. That's the Moreno rivalry. He gets to win on it. He's got the stylistic edge over Figueredo. And he did it to him again. That ground and pound was ferocious too. Brandon Moreno looked really good. Happy for him to get the win in Me for the Mexican people. He was getting booed hard though by the Brazilian fans. Main event, Jamal Hill, Glover Teixeira. Who would have thought this fight would go five rounds? Jamal Hill gave Glover Teixeira the beating of a lifetime. Absolutely one-sided. Glover had moments, of course. Takedown moments. Some strikes, too. But the vast majority of the fight, Jamal Hill picked him apart. And that left high kick that he nearly knocked Glover out with like two times had Glover wobbling like he was on ice skates in the cage. Jamal Hill looked incredible with the stand-up. His grappling skills are definitely there. He got out of bad positions with Glover. We can't sleep on his ground skills anymore. Jamal Hill has evolved and become the number one light heavyweight on the planet. He is the UFC champion, obviously. Yuri Prohashka in the wings. The likes of Amankomed and Kalayev keeping his eye on it. But right now, we have to give Jamal Hill the credit he deserves. He's the UFC champion. Light heavyweight. He's the best in the world at 205 pounds. There's some savages around the world that I would like to see him fight eventually. But he's still the champ. UFC champ. You're the pinnacle. You're the top. Until you have that UFC belt, you can't argue with it. Jamal Hill does what needed to be done by beating the shit out of Glover Teixeira. In that fifth round, Glover had his Hail Mary moment. He landed the takedown. Passed it him out. Jamal Hill reversed his position. Escapes. Excellent work by him. He's a great champion now to have because him and Yuri Prohoshka is going to be an absolutely crazy fight if that's what's next. Also, note this, Glover Teixeira retires. It was kind of beautiful because he said, I get to go out the same night as Shogun. And I think that makes so much sense. Glover and Shogun, though, the way their careers end, Glover ended up here fighting for the world title, giving everything he had and losing a fight. Yes, he was getting his ass whipped, but he still showed he had that chin, that toughness. Even the reflexes were still there. Jamal Hill was just a better guy. And you look at the end of Shogun, he looked like a shell of his former self. Glover Teixeira 
is not going to go through that. I think it was actually a really good call to retire. As good as he looked in a loss, I know he got his ass handed to him, but at the end of the day, he gave hell to Jamal Hill still. Even Jamal Hill after the toughest man I've ever faced. Glover does not break. He's made of stone. That's a good way to go out. Better than Shogun's, honestly. But it's cool they get to go out in the same night. Jamal Hill has big things coming. Glover, I think he'll still be around the UFC scene, training fighters. He's got Poton, Alex Bahia, his protege, who might be fighting Jamal Hill sometime in the future. Who knows? Depends who the champion of the world is when things line up. Because maybe Poton beats out Asanya again and then goes to challenge up a weight class. Jamal Hill and Poton, that's a crazy ass fight. I know I'm doing, you know, real futuristic speculation, but I like to guess. Jamal Hill, great performance. Overall, UFC 283, I loved it. I'm going to give it an A rating as a card. I also want to review my picks. We started off with the first fight of the night. We got Daniel Marcos. We start off 1-0. We got Josiana Nunes. We go then to 2-0. She beats Zara Fern. Nicholas Dalby brings us to 3-0. We lose with Terrence McKinney. You know, Ismail Bonfim fucked him up. 3-1. We win with Cody Stammen. 4-1. We win with Jail Ten Almeida. 5-1. We win with Gabriel Bonfim. 6-1. We win with Tiago Moises. 7-1. We lose with Gregory Rodriguez. Bruno Ferreira beats him 7-2. We took, you know, a ballsy call on Shogun. It brings us to 7-3 because Poteria ends up beating him. But we come back with Johnny Walker, 8-3. We then get Andrade, 9-3. We then get Gilbert Burns, 10-3. Earlier in the week, I was on the side of Davison Figueroa post-weigh-in show. I flipped to pick Brandon Moreno. We win. We're now 11-3. The Brandon Moreno flip... One of my best decisions ever. I felt it in my gut seeing them face off at the Wayans and said, I have to go the other side. And Brandon Moreno does it. And then obviously we lose with the main event. I had Glover by sub. Jamal Hill shut me up and proved me wrong. Like he said after. He said, what do the haters got to say now or something like that? He mentioned that people were doubting him. I was one of them. I didn't think he had the grappling chops and he did. So Jamal Hill, excellent work. And yeah, we finish out 11 and 4. The picks were pretty damn good this week. 15 fights, finishing 11 and 4. I feel pretty damn good about that. I'm happy with the results. I'm happy as hell with the card. I hope you guys enjoyed a great week's worth of content. If you haven't yet, smash the like button. And if you're new here, subscribe to the channel. Much love, guys. Let me know what you think of the card. Let me know in the comments what you think might be next for Jamal Hill. And I appreciate everybody for tuning into the show. Peace, guys, and I will see you all in the next one.